Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're going to talk about this upcoming summer, but before I do that, hit that like button. Got nothing else going on, right? Summertime. <clears throat> kind of slows down in Arizona because it gets hot. Well, sometimes it doesn't. Our schools start around the third week of July. I don't know this year. I don't have any kids in school anymore, but uh, they used to start about the third week of July. So people were pretty active in May and June buying homes. Not as active as March, but uh, you'd be surprised. Rough time to do open houses. You have half those metal open house signs. You have to wear gloves. <laughs> Think about burn them. You go and you uh, unlock the lockbox at the house and you take out that little black thing that holds the key. You better put it in the shade because when you go out and you pick that thing up, you're going to get burned. And I've been burned. So we're going to talk about what's going on in the real estate market here. And I'm going to tell you uh, where I think we're going to be in July. And because I can, I can only because... I'm looking at the data that I see right now, and some things are going to have to radically change for anything to change much in the summertime. You know I don't like to make long-term predictions, but I'm pretty uh, comfortable making short to midterm projections. And I'm going to show you why. And I know, I get it, there's people out there who can't stand my charts. Rick, you can't analyze real estate with charts. Well, sometimes you just can. Supply and demand tells you everything. And right now, see that blue line? That's the number of homes that are coming on the market every seven days. See that red line? That's the number of homes that are going under contract. Well, so what? Well, what it means is 82% of the homes that are coming on the market are going under contract. Prices cannot go down until that changes. You can't have 80% of the homes being sold and expect that prices are going to come down. Not until that changes. Now, how can that change? Well, we're going to go through a few things here and we'll see, does it look like that's going to change? I don't know. I'm not a, uh, I don't have a crystal ball. But one of the things that I'm seeing, though, is I'm seeing this little chart that I have here. I'm tracking price reductions. They keep going up, up, and up. Um, now, that makes buyers go, yay, here comes the crash. Well, those are price reductions. Those are people that are saying, I thought I could get this. It turns out I can only get this. But the amount that they're getting is still way higher than last year. So prices are going up at about 25% a year, yet they price it at 30% and they're finding out too quick. Well, maybe that wasn't such a good idea. So what we're seeing, though, is we are seeing an increase in listings. But it's not at the rate that we should have if we expect to see any changes coming this summer. I mean, here we are now at 6027. I think today, which is Sunday, I tracked, I think we're at 6,600 homes. So we're going up about 500 a week. But at 500 a week, I mean, I don't think that's going to put us way up here to where we were in 2020. But even in 2020, real estate prices were going up like crazy. So this number of 6,000, it's going to be off, have to be off the charts. So that number is going to have to really scream up. We have a gap right now of about eight to 900 homes. You know, we have 4,400 come on and 3,400 go under contract. That's got to change. The Cromford Market Index is an index that uh, takes a look at supply and demand. And right now it's sitting at 388. If none of these other charts were out there and you just looked at the number 388, you would know it's a seller's market. That's really strong. Because 100 is considered a balanced market, and we have a long way to go. And we've already been down there in 2020 after we were told to stay home for a while, and everybody kind of quit buying real estate, quit going to open houses, and then boom, everybody went to the bank, got their loans, and off we went. But even then, we didn't get down to 100. So we are definitely, it's a trend now. It's going down. But look how long this is going to take. Even if we just continue this right here, by July, we're still going to be at well over 200 as an index. What will that mean? Will that mean that we're going to see prices plummet? Nope, we're still above 100. So it's still a seller's market. Cromford right here, Michael Orr says, although the market's cooling, prices are still in a strong upward trajectory that will be maintained for several months at least. Supply is increasing while demand is falling. And we just saw that in that last chart. But the gap is so large, it will take a long time for these two elements to achieve balance even if the current trend continues the last two charts i showed you shows you how long it's going to take to get there the price increases over the past two years have been extremely large but should not be surprising to cromford market report subscribers now here he goes on and he kind of picks on core logic which is another outfit that tracks growth 
and real estate prices. They told us that we would prices would fall by 6% in June of 2021, and they told us that prices would rise by 3.2 by June 2022. Well, guess what? We went up 68%, 58%, 61, 55, 69 over that two-year period. I'd say that's a huge miss. And he only points that out because um, when things kind of start going soft and start sliding, people tend to jump the gun. Now, what do I see going on this summer? I don't see um, prices dropping. I do see that by the end of the summer, you're going to see some relief in bidding wars. What I'm not seeing yet is I'm not seeing any seller contribution increases. People tend to contribute towards closing costs when the <coughs> excuse me when the market uh, starts to soften. Not seeing that yet. Um, I'm not seeing a big decline in pending sales. Remember, 83% are still going under contract. The other thing I'm not seeing is I'm not seeing an increase in contingencies. I'll buy your house if I can sell mine. Uh, people will accept those if they think the market's softening. That's pretty much staying right around the same zone. Now, interest rates, the feds meet this Wednesday, and they, they'll put out a statement Wednesday afternoon. They've been saying that they're going to go up 50 basis points, but the market's already baked that in. See down here where they went up 25 basis points, and here's 50. So they've already, the markets have already said, okay, we get it. You're going to go up 50 basis points. We're going to, the bond market has reacted. So when they come out Wednesday and they say they're going up 50, rates might even drop. We just don't know. Nearly as certain as the fact that the Fed will announce balance sheet normalization, there too, the bond market has already been trading accordingly. What we do not know, what we don't know is whether the bond market has overprepared or underprepared for this normalization announcement. We also don't know what other details the Fed might communicate or if they'll be different than those suggested by the meeting minutes from early April. Either way, significant volatility is possible next week, especially surrounding Wednesday afternoon's Fed's announcement. So those in the lending business are going to be watching the markets closely Thursday morning. And if you're sitting there and you're deciding whether or not you're going to lock, I guarantee you your, your loan officer isn't going to know what to tell you uh, prior to Wednesday because we don't know. I mean, I'm not in that arena, so I don't concentrate on it that much. But, you know, they just don't know um, how the market's going to react to whatever else. Now, what if they come out and say, 75 basis points they've been hinting at that and maybe that's why the market's already cooked in the 50 they come out and announce a 75 point increase which is you know another quarter of a point um and we might see a, a rate increase coming in the markets but we don't know i do know that you know it's scary times whenever the federal reserve needs to come in and tamp down inflation the only way they can do it is kill the economy and that doesn't happen overnight. Paul Volcker, it took him a while to destroy us, and he did. Uh, got interest rates uh, way up in the stratosphere. The economy tanked, and inflation magically disappeared. <laughs> I wish there was an easier way to do it. It's called a soft landing, and nobody seems to think that's going to happen. So how many people are rushing towards adjustable rate mortgages right now? I keep hearing they're going up, up, up. Well, we're still below 40% people are adjustable rate mortgages. And it depends on the price points. Two hundred to 400000 is way down here it's below gosh 10 percent so you'll see if the stock market continues getting that living daylights beat out of it like it did last week then you'll see some softening in the luxury market um and that usually turns pretty quickly so but that all depends because that affects corporate earnings it affects you know everybody's stock portfolio and that's what drives that market so you know could be a summer of uh luxury listings a lot of listings coming up but i don't know uh, we'll just have to watch that closely. What I do know is this. Things don't turn quickly in real estate. And the numbers we're looking at today are looking like this summer is still going to see price increases. It's appearing now that it's going to be happening at a slower rate than what we've been seeing. That can't continue forever. I haven't seen one number or one indication of a crash. So I know I'm disappointing you crashers out there. I don't see it. If I do see it, You'll see it in the charts, and I'll tell you. So be sure and hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe because I come out with some very interesting stuff from time to time. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Take care.